Hi everyone, my name is Kimberly Fiak. I'm a PhD student in experimental pathology at the University of Iowa. I work as a graduate research assistant and I'm gonna to talk to you today about becoming a brain detective, a field of neuropathology. So let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit of an introduction about me. Uh, what do I do? First of all, I'm a scientist studying neuropathology. So neuro being the prefix for brains and nerves and pathology being the suffix for study of disease. So together, I study brain diseases. Particularly, I'm interested in why some people get sick while their brains are developing, and others get sick as they get older. So we look at a particular protein called the tau protein, which plays a role in the normal healthy development of neurons in the brain. But as you get older, it can accumulate and break down neurons and cause diseases like Alzheimer's disease and other degenerative diseases. So I'm trying to understand why the protein functions normally in development, but abnormally in disease. How did I get here? Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in neuroscience and psychology from the University of Texas at Dallas. And then I came here after undergrad to get my master's degree in pathology. And then I loved it so much, I decided to stay on and get my PhD in experimental pathology, which is a fancy way to say that I use different techniques to study disease. So what does a scientist do? Uh, this is a question I get a lot, and the answer is it really depends on what kind of scientist you are. I'm a wet bench scientist, so I do a lot of experiments in the lab and not a lot of computer or analyzing work. Um, I work with cell lines and do cell culture. So we use these different types of cells as a model system to kind of mimic what's going on in your body during disease. I work with a type of cell called the stem cell, which is the cell type that you're born with, and it changes into all the other different types of cells in your body as you develop. So that's me on the left with some stem cells that I was working with. And then we take those stem cells in my lab and turn them into neurons, just like the ones in your brain, which is what you see on the right. And we can use those neurons to answer different questions about what happens to different proteins during disease, as well as during development. In my field, I'm really interested in brain disease. So I also work a lot with human brains. Uh, I'm a graduate assistant for the Iowa Neurobank Core, which is a brain tissue repository. That means that individuals can donate their brain to our brain bank, and we will give other researchers at our university and other universities access to that brain tissue to help advance their research. So I help a lot with sectioning those brains, cataloging them, um, checking to see if there is a neurodegenerative disease at play in those brains or some other uh, neurological process and making sure that um, researchers are using that tissue responsibly. So what kind of things can we look at in neuropathology? Well, there's a lot. Uh, the first is degenerative disease. This is probably the most common thing that we think of with neuropathology. That's things like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, ALS, so on and so forth. And these are usually caused by the buildup of some protein that has become toxic to the neurons, causing them to die and causing disease. The other really big one in the field is tumors um, or cancers. So there are lots of different types of brain cancer and they all look different. They have a different morphology or way that they look under the microscope. So we can use different clues in how the cells look and are acting to tell us what kind of cancer is at play. Um, but there are other things that are seen in our field that are kind of lesser known, but very important to study, particularly things like parasites, um, things that can be acquired from your environment that can make their way up to the brain and cause problems. And also viruses are another big thing that can cause neurological issues that we would study in neuropathology. So different careers in neuropathology. The first and probably most well-known is the neuropathologist. Uh, this is a medical doctor, so someone who has an MD or a DO that has completed four years of training in pathology and two years of subspecialty in neuropathology. These are gonna be the individuals actually diagnosing disease in patients. So if you ever have a biopsy taken for something, um, some type of tissue, this is the person who's gonna be looking at it under the microscope and deciding what it actually is. On the other hand, you have scientists like me. These have a wide range of degrees, um, depending on kind of what their interest is in the field. So bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD, they can also be neuropathologists. So they can also have an MD or DO, or they can just have a PhD or an MS, um, anything like that. These are gonna focus less on diagnosing disease and more on research related to this disease. But they're gonna answer questions like, how does a disease actually manifest? What are the causes and consequences of the disease? 
what kind of therapeutics or treatments can we create for this disease? So it's going to be a lot more research and answering questions about the disease than it is going to be about diagnosis. And then finally, a lesser known career in the field of pathology, not particular to neuropathology, but just pathology in general, is the pathologist assistant. This is a two-year master's degree obtained from an accredited university followed by board certification. And this is a really cool career because they are the ones that actually get to process all of these tissues that come in, either from surgical cases or from autopsies. They're the ones that are going to be taking measurements, writing detailed reports about the tissue, and prepping the samples so that they can be um, looked at by the neuropathologist. So they're a really key component in making sure that your tissue is taken properly from your surgery and given to the pathologist so that they can make the correct diagnosis for you. So I'm really interested in becoming what's called a staff scientist. So this is a kind of newer position that started up and it's essentially an independent researcher in a lab that doesn't have to obtain their own funding. So a lab is typically structured with a principal investigator or PI running the lab, they're the head of the lab. They usually get the grant funding to keep the lab afloat and are also responsible for overseeing all the uh, scientists that work under them. And a staff scientist typically has kind of the similar role of a postdoc, which is what you complete after your doctorate. They are responsible for doing a lot of the hands-on research that helps you get the grant funding. They also can help with managing graduate students, teaching them techniques, and overseeing a lot of the projects in the lab. And then so on after that, you have graduate students and undergrads and so on and so forth. So these are independent scientists that just don't have to necessarily obtain their own funding. The skills needed for this, um, what you would need for any scientist, uh, dedication and perseverance is a big one. You need to be really passionate about what you're doing to make all those long hours really worth it and also make you excited and enthusiastic about your project. You also need attention to detail. Science is very exact and specific. There's a lot of trial and error to it, but we use a lot of exact measurements. Um, a lot of things need to be at particular conditions in order to work. So attention to detail and organization is a must. There's also a lot of creativity in science, and I don't think a lot of people realize that. Science is a very creative discipline. You have to be able to think about things in different perspectives and in different ways in order to find solutions. And that kind of goes hand in hand with problem solving and puzzles. Science is very much a puzzle, a mystery, uh, and there's a lot of problem solving involved. You have a lot of questions answered from something, and then you get a lot more questions out of that answer. So it's very important to use that creativity and, and problem solving skills to help move your projects along. The average salary for a staff scientist, depending on where you are and what kind of area of um, science you're working in, would be somewhere between 85,000 and 100,000. Again, it depends on your skill set, kind of your level or how much experience you have and where you are. Which brings me to places of employment. There are actually tons of places you can work as a staff scientist. And this is very much a growing career field, which is really great because that means more opportunities are opening up. Um, so some of the big ones would be academia, working in a university lab under a PI, or working in a core facility that would provide services to the whole university. There's also industry, so pharmaceutical companies, startups, product development, things like that. Then nonprofits will often hire staff scientists to work on particular projects that their nonprofit is interested in, or government agencies will also employ staff scientists to kind of help larger projects um, keep moving forward. So how to prepare for the career. Um, everybody's path in science and to becoming a scientist is going to be very different. I'm going to share with you kind of what I did, but keep in mind that your path can look different and that's totally okay. So as an undergrad, I started by obtaining research experience to make sure that I was really interested in doing research as a career. So I worked in different labs, I did internships, and kind of narrowed down what specialty or field of science particularly interested in me, which is how I found out about neuropathology. And I graduated with a basic science degree. I did neuroscience and psychology because I'm very interested in the brain, but you could also do anything like biology, you could do chemistry, math, anything like that. Then I went to graduate school and got more experience working with human tissue. For me, I'm really interested in working as part of my job in a core facility. So it was really important to get extra experience working with human tissue so I could handle it properly. So I knew what regions that I was interested in. So I knew um, what proteins and things would be where and also how to responsibly teach others how to work with human tissue. And then hopefully in a couple years, I will graduate with a PhD, which will kind of put me on the path to start working as an independent scientist in the lab. 
So loves and challenges within your career. Um, I'll start with loves first. There's always something to learn in science. It's an ever-growing, ever-expanding field. There's definitely always something new that you can discover. And usually when you answer one question, you develop another question from that. So it kind of never ends the cycle. There's also a wide variety of experiments and tasks that really break up monotony. It's not like a desk job where you're sitting and doing the same thing over and over. There's a lot of different things that you can be doing every day. Um, there is still monotony, don't get me wrong, pipetting and aliquotting stuff can get very monotonous, um, but there's definitely opportunities to break that up with different experiments. You're also helping to discover things that could change lives. Um, it's really, really important to keep in mind that everything we do is to better society. So we're trying to discover things that can change lives and make things better. And I think that's a really good motivating factor and, and really contributes to wanting to continue on in this career path. You can also have a lot of flexibility and freedom in what you research, depending on what you area um, you work in. So academia has a lot of flexibility. Industry, not as much, but there's a lot of different areas in industry that you can work in depending on what your interests are. So I think there is a lot of flexibility to kind of what you're doing. Some of the challenges, there's a lot of schooling involved, particularly if you go to grad school. I went straight from high school to undergrad, straight from undergrad to my master's, and straight from my master's to my PhD. So when I'm all said and done, that will be like over 20 years of schooling straight in a row. That's a lot of schooling. Um, failure is also guaranteed. Science is never perfect. Um, there is a lot of trial and error, like I said. So failure is gonna be guaranteed in this field. Nothing's gonna always work right and that's okay. Um, but that can be kind of um, dampening to your motivation sometimes when things are failing constantly. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. Breakthroughs can also take years. So this kind of goes with that love. You're helping to discover things that could change lives. Um, but it's not going to happen overnight and not in an instant and sometimes not even in the course of your career. It's important to keep in mind with science that a lot of the work we're doing is to lay the foundation for things that can be discovered maybe after our career is over by people we've trained. Um, so breakthroughs take a long time and not everyone's going to experience that in their career, but the things that you do are still important. And then finally, um, particularly with being a staff scientist, it's a very undefined career path. It's kind of newer. So um, in some places, there's not a lot of growth or career development opportunities. Um, so that's something to keep in mind that there's not uh, like a particular path that you have to follow and that gives you um, stability. It's very undefined and, and can change a lot. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning about pathology, being a scientist, and my career path. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to email me, which is listed on the slide at KimberlyFeoch at uiowa.edu. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter at The Path PhD, where I talk a lot about my experiences in grad school with mental health, uh, being a woman in a STEM field, and also sharing my love of neurobiology. So thank you.